Hi, today we've got an extremely low cost soldier 9 to take a look at. This one is an unbranded unit, so there's no markings on it whatsoever. But this one is designed to take JBC C210 type cartridges, like the one that came with it here. And it's designed to operate from a wide range of power supplies. So you can plug it in with a DC barrel jack, or it's got a USB-C connector, which is compatible with pretty much every power supply out there. So it supports all of the various protocols, including power delivery 2, 3, quick charge 2 and 3, and some other protocols as well. But it will also run from a straight USB power supply as well. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your project including PCBs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced PCBs all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist FR4 materials. You can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on there on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. And they also offer some mechanical services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication. And also when you're making something with a little bit higher volume, you can also get some injection molding done here. So don't forget to visit PCBWay.com. So the unit retails from AliExpress for about £20 delivered and it includes these three items. So the Soldier 9 itself, an adapter which allows you to use the DC barrel jack, one C210 type cartridge, as well as the little storage case that you can see here. The unit's really quite compact and comfortable to hold. It's a similar size to the Miniware USB Soldier 9. So this one's made entirely from plastic. So we've got the silicone type grip here, which is quite functional. And then we've got this slightly translucent plastic, which you can just about see the PCB um, through it. We'll obviously take it apart later. Then in terms of the user interface, we've got a white graphic OLED screen. I think it's 0 0.96 inches. And then to do things like change the settings or go through the menu, we've got this joystick here that goes left and right. And you can push it in to select the option. Then on this end, we've got the USB-C connector, but as I said, it does come with this adapter here. So if you want to use a DC power supply, you can plug this in and then use the barrel jack there to plug into your power supply. And then at this end, we've got the area where you insert the cartridge. Now, be really careful with these C210 cartridges. They are really quite sharp and you do have to push them in quite hard. So, uh, yeah, definitely exercise caution. But then we've got a very short tip to grip distance, so this should be really quite usable when you're doing some soldering on very small parts. The unit came apart really quite easily, just a couple of screws and you're pretty much inside. So if you ever did need to do any repairs, certainly it can be done without making any damage to the chassis. But what we've got is the OLED on the left here. Then we've got a current sense chip. So this is a cross chip CC6903. I think we saw this in the GVM H3. So this is a current sense chip, but the input is isolated and it's able to measure AC as well. So this allows you to do some measurements, then you get an analog output. We've got a couple of contacts here for gripping on to the cartridge, but most of the other components are on the other side. So we've got the USB-C connector, along with some protection and some resistors as well. We've got the little joystick here for browsing the user interface. And then we've got an HDM CH549 microcontroller. And this pretty much does everything that it needs to on here. So we've got a USB power delivery type C controller built into this, as well as all the things for driving the OLED and that kind of stuff on here. So this handles everything in terms of the protocol. We've got a voltage regulator as well for regulating this down to 3.3 volts. We've got a little MOSFET as well. This is a P-channel MOSFET that's driving the heater directly got an op amp just here for reading the thermocouple and it looks like an npn type transistor just here for driving this p channel mosfet from a logic signal so really quite straightforward no electrolytic capacitors we've just got a couple of ceramics in here so really there's not a huge amount to break in here other than maybe uh, over time maybe these contacts will become high resistance in terms of the construction we've got the plastic chassis which comes together like this there's a couple of screws, one at the end and one just here. And then this barrel just screws over the top of everything else to hold it all together. So we screw that in, put the two screws in, and then we can slide the sleeve back over here. So really quite easy to get into. 
I've got a USB-C power lead here, which has a little power monitor on it, so we can see how much power is being drawn by the Soldier 9. So let's plug it in. Very clear OLED, as you can see on here. And it's heating up, got up to about 41 watts or so. Heated up very quickly to 250 degrees C. And we've got a really clear display, so the temperature. We've got a little bar graph showing how much power is being drawn. Then we've got a model number the TS210, so that's the first time I've seen any kind of model number. Then an indication here, 11 volts is being requested from the USB power supply, and then we've got a current limit of 5 amps. So that's all uh, very clear on the OLED and pretty quick to get up and running with this soldering iron, especially with how quickly it heats up. Now if we try and uh, change the temperature, we can just use the joystick at the bottom here. So we can nudge it to the side and it immediately increases the temperature on the soldering iron. And again, we can adjust it the other way. No presets on here, we just adjust the temperature quickly with the joystick. And then everything else is in the menu. So if we hold down the joystick just here, we enter the menu. Now we've got a sleep menu here, and it looks like there is a vibration sensor on the PCB. I didn't see it, but maybe it's one of those two pin type SMD devices where it's actually a mechanical sprung switch. And if we go into here, we push the joystick, we've got standby temperature and standby time. So after a certain period of time, it will go to a reduced temperature. Um, so we've got 35 here, I assume that's 35 seconds. Uh, and then we've also got sleep time. So after a period of inactivity, it'll actually turn the heater off completely. And then you can initialize sleep as well. And you can also set up how we do the auto wake. So here, auto wake uh, is set to yes. So basically, when you move the soldier line again, it will wake back up. The alternative is that you use the uh, joystick just here to wake up the unit. Then we go through, we've got system settings here. So temperature step, you saw it went up in 10 degrees C. Let's change that to 5, which I find is a bit more usable. We've got the OLED brightness which is currently set to 7, and it's actually a little bit too bright in my opinion. So brightness, then we've got language, so we can pick from English or Chinese, so just the two languages there. Um, if you're left-handed, you can switch the OLED so that it's upside down, so it works when you're holding it the other way around. And then we've got factory resets, and then back to the user menu. Then we've got calibration, and interestingly, we've got a four point calibration here so this won't suffer from the same issue we had on the last soldier nine we can do a proper calibration on this and then we've got the power settings so yeah we can go through the various options for how it selects power from the usb power supply it was set to pps before we can set the current limit At the moment, it looks like it's set to unlimited. And then uh, various other settings for the power supplies. We can go to exit. And that's it. So that's all of the items in the user interface. Now, <laughs> you saw me fiddling around there. Uh, the joystick is almost the wrong way around, in my opinion, but I'm sure that other people will find it perfectly fine. I was trying to nudge it the opposite way. But we've set five degree steps now, as you can see. And that works quite nicely. So with the unit sat on the bench for 35 seconds, it's gone into standby mode. You can see the standby symbol here, and it's gone down to 150. Let's see how quick it takes to heat up. And bam, we're immediately there. So within about two seconds, it was back to working temperature. So very usable in terms of the sleep mode. Let's test out the calibration. So it's set to 345, as you can see there. And it's reading more like 390 degrees C. So the calibration's a little bit off. All right, so we go to the calibration menu. And what I'm assuming is it will set the tip to this temperature and we need to adjust the number here until it reads the correct temperature on the calibrator. So let's try it. So we're reading about 230 at the moment. Let's adjust this down. A 
that's probably close enough for the 200. And then we go to the 300 setting. And then let's do the 400. Just down a few more. It does vary a little bit, as you can see, but it's pretty much accurate. It seems to vary up and down just a little bit, but it's settled at about 344. So that calibration procedure seems to work quite well, and we've got decent calibration on here now. So let's do a little bit of soldering. And so as you saw there, absolutely no problem soldering with the genuine JVC cartridge either. It was drawing about 50 watts continuously while it was heating up. Uh, so very similar in resistance to the little cartridge that came with it. Uh, but yeah, generally it seems to work quite nicely. I think the only criticism that I found really of this unit is this little joystick it is a little bit finicky. So when you um, are pushing it left and right, that works absolutely fine. But when you want to depress it to press OK... Uh, you do have to get it just in the right point to push it in, otherwise it latches up on the mechanism. So that's the only criticism I've got. It is probably quite a low-cost joystick given the price of this thing. But overall, I think this would be a really nice soldering iron for someone who hasn't got much money and wants to get into electronics. Certainly, functionally speaking, it seems to work quite well. So I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. And if you've got any thoughts or comments about the item, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to visit our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. And until next time, thanks for watching.